We're of course, we don't know where we're going Try to use a map but lost it on the way Of course, march into the void Cause nothing matters anyway Cause nothing matters anyway Good morning and welcome to Easy Sunshine, the town's premier company vegan tea room. I'm your waitress... Zoe, you don't need to tell us your name. You live with us. Can we just have two teas and some toast? Charlie broke another kettle. I was trying to go green. You threw it out the window while it was on. I'm pretty sure you burned someone. I heard a scream from outside. Well, maybe it was a cold homeless person who was screaming for joy because I'd just warmed them up. Bet you feel bad now, don't you, Liam? Oh yes, forgive me. I hadn't considered that you may in fact be the saviour of the homeless. How foolish I am. So it's just business as usual, then. I'll just get you... Excuse me, miss? Miss! Oh, sorry, guys, I've got a customer. Yes? What is it? What it is, is that I've ordered a green tea nary but two minutes ago, and my thirst has still not been satiated. What kind of razzle-dazzle establishment is this place even supposed to be? I'm a modern man who lives at a high-speed pace. I could have been forging a major business deal, or lightly twizzling the edges of my lovely mustache. Of the many Cockney Vegan Tea Rooms in the area, this is by far the worst. Excuse me, mate! I said my tea- No, I heard about your tea, you ponce, but clearly I'm busy. Can you word that out, or am I going to have to sit you down and whisper the words to you like sweet nothings to a trusted lover? Now, is there a problem? Is there? No. Good. I'll get your tea quick as a flash. There you go, Liam. Charlie. Oh, are you guys off? This gentleman was about to buy you each a lovely kale smoothie, wasn't he? To apologise for being so rude? Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, no time for a free drink, I'm afraid, Zoe. We're off to our lecture. I'll let you copy my notes if you're working. Oh, lovely. There you go, guys. Be sure to learn lots. Thanks, sir. Is Zoe all right? I think that impressively mustachioed and modern-looking man next to her had wet himself. Yeah, she's fine. I'm pretty sure that's how they all talk in London. Oh, there's the bus! Last one, there's a, a, a person who doesn't... Bus! Oh, God, we're late. Again. Why do you always get distracted by everything we walk past? You look me in the eyes and tell me that that squirrel didn't look fulfilled by life. It didn't mean you had to bring it with you. No squirrel is fulfilled. I think you're just projecting. Oh. By the end of the week, I'll have taught that squirrel to chase its tail like there's no tomorrow. That'll give it something to aim for. Anyway, let's get into the lecture. Okay, I don't think the dean's heard us, so we can just sit back by. Liam Sterling, you finally graced us with your despicable presence. Oh, God. Um, I'll just sit at the back. And Charlie Best, too. Sit down here, where my beautiful words can hit you with their full force. Oh, hooray. You're damn right, Hazar. This week, you sickening goons have to write a poem. Access the writer's pen. The inner malaise. The genius inside. Of course, poetry is an entirely personal and subjective medium. But if I don't like what you've written, I'm expelling you. The poems will be performed on our beautiful open-air stage. Since when have we had an open-air stage? Well, since I demolished the university's centuries-old Roman amphitheatre and replaced it with my own darling creation. Doesn't that cost money? Shut up! This seems really easy. And easy's always good. Charlie, your response to our essay on the meaning of life was literally the word biscuits over and over again. And I still did better than you. Anyway, thank God we've got this going on. I won't even have to try. Did I mention there would be a top-notch prize for the best poem? A prize? You bet your sweet bippy! The prize is a £15 voucher to sock warehouse. Shop for all your foot warmth based needs. I do indeed. Such charity is worthy of I, Theodore Huxtable Edelweiss Dean, or the Dean for short. Oh my god, Liam, we have to win! I need socks! I keep running out! Didn't you have an entire bag of them last week? I've been creating sock sculptures. Some call me the Michelangelo of the linen closet. Cease speaking, peons, and get out! I wish to play solitaire and read celebrity gossip blogs. Yes, Mr. Dean. Please, Sterling, just call me Dean. Mr. Dean was my father's killer's name. All right, then. Bye.
Now that is a ball beach body. What the hell is a sock sculpture? The future of art. Liam, how exactly are we going to win this voucher? I don't know anything about poetry. Well, seems like the library's the best bet. Is that where they keep all the knowledge? It sure is. To the library! All oh, the fun we'll have! Ten minutes later... God, I hate it in there! All that shushing! I'll sing if I want to, Liam! There's always a time and a place for my one-woman tribute to Cindy Lauper. Well, I found it useful, Charlie. I found the most helpful, knowledgeable object in the library. The computer. Exactly, the computer. Amazing what you can find with a quick Google. Hemingway had a crippling addiction to alcohol. Virginia Woolf threw herself tragically into a river. And the Marquis de Sade was a twisted sadist. I learnt something very important. What's that? My life's really boring. No one wants to read a poem by an ordinary guy like me. They want to read something by someone like... Over there, Martha. She lives her life to the limit. Wait, is that Martha Loveless over there? She's so cool! I'm sure she has loads of cool stories. She was absolutely mental last year. Yeah, remember when she drank three bottles of absinthe and jumped through that third story window? She thought gravity was a government conspiracy that night. Hey, Martha! Martha! Oh, uh, hi. You're right. Charlie and I haven't seen you for ages. I bet you've been getting up to all kinds of hijinks. Not really. Nothing's really been the same since last summer. I've been kicked out of my flat because crows just keep smashing through my window. A kettle fell out of the sky and hit me on the head earlier. And that charity fundraiser I organised for my sick dog got taken over by the Yakuza. I've just been out here by myself roaming the streets, rally scraps. It's so cold all the time. No one will even listen to me. Martha, those anecdotes were classic. You're so funny. No, seriously. If you have a place to stay or even something to eat. You don't need our help, Martha. You're already cooler than cool. Just forget it. Well, look what you've done, Charlie. Now we look like fools in front of Martha Loveless. We'll never be popular now. Look, I'm going to go and try and find something exciting so I can write about it. What are you going to do? I'll probably go back to the library. I'm sure if I close my eyes and start running around on random floors, I'll knock over a poetry book. Yeah, I don't know why you keep doing that. You could just talk to the man at the front desk. Nah, that's no fun. Anyway, I'll see you later. No, Charlie, wait, what about me? Well, um, to look at this flyer. Super Extreme Sports Extreme Club. There. Now you've got something to do. Oh, thanks. See you later, and please try and stop singing in the library. People are getting really annoyed. No publicity is bad publicity. Fair enough. Hi, is this the Super Extreme Sports Extreme Club? Uh, uh, what? What's that? Oh, ah, yeah. As long as you mean the one with two extremes in the title. Because we're super extreme. You know who isn't? The weak. The puny weak! Get your hand off my arm. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I get carried away. Uh, but yes, this is indeed the club you seek. Do you wish to join? Could you even handle it? I said get off. Look, I just want my life to be a bit more exciting or something, like Evil Knievel or the Pope. The Pope? Oh, an extreme man indeed. Uh, we'd be happy to have you. Our membership at the moment is somewhat lacking. Some people couldn't handle how extreme we really are. <laughs> They're not dead, are they? Oh, 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 oh. oh, let's not ask questions like that. Do you want to join or not? Yeah. Are you, like, in charge, or...? <laughs> oh, no, not, not I, my small friend. But I'll tell you who I am. The man of a million push-ups. The bastion of bravery. The fellow without fear. I am Extreme Steve. Hooray. Or as I like to call myself, Extreme. Absolutely not. Look, who exactly is in charge? Oh, the leader is a great man. A powerful man. An extreme man. A man that will lead us all to the most exciting time of all our lives. Hush, he rides from the east. What are you talking about? <laughs> Huzzah! There's no entrance quite like a window entrance. You called? What? N no, you! Yes, Sterling. Don't you believe that I could train myself to be the pinnacle of the human condition? To be the best that mankind's ever been? I once saw you get out of breath eating a Twix. Mid-lecture. Oh, I'd like to see you try and vanquish the menacing veneer of a Twix, Sterling. Their packaging says chocolate snack, but the truth tells a far harsher tale. I thoroughly regret coming here. Oh, come on, Sterling. Sign-up's only two pounds. Oh, sold. Ah, grand. Soon you'll be as extreme as me. Extreme. Wait, is that what you're calling yourself now? Aye. Uh, Absolutely not! Guys, I'm home. Anyone in? Yeah, come in here. You're back.
back late. I was going to stay here and train this squirrel, but we got thrown out of the library for making too much of a racket. People never understand my genius. You can't bring a squirrel back home, Charlie. We all agreed you shouldn't have pets since you brought home that chupacabra. And you're already not listening. Anything we have to do for the course? Yeah, we have to write a poem or something. I was going to do research before my attention was taken from me by this squirrel like candy from all those babies T.H.E. Dean keeps taking candy from. That's horrible. He says he's freeing a whole generation of tooth decay, but he keeps eating Twixes during lectures while shouting, This is my prize, I earned it! Oh my god, Bill, can you stop with the wooing? We get it, you're a ghost. There's no need to be mean, Zoe. My body died, not my feelings. And you're in my room. Sorry, Bill. I I thought you might want some company. I mean, I've never been clear on why you can't just, you know, go through your door. I died in here. It's ghost law. Oh, that's certainly a thing. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. Further name, Spooky Bill. Shores off my playful side. Okay, Spooky Bill. Uh, Do you know anything about poetry? Poetry? Of course I know. Why, I remember back when I was alive, I'd hang out with all the greats. Sylvia Plath, Charles Buinsky, Shakespeare, Cindy Looper, the notorious big... Well, we'd all ride our bikes to the garden centre and drink cider around the back of the miniature flower pots. Oh boy, they had their stories, let me tell you. What? What? They weren't even alive at the same time. When was this? How old are you? (laughs) Who even knows? Anyway, Charlie, if I know one thing about writing... I don't think you do. If I know one thing about writing, it's that you need some... (laughs) Poetry fuel! Is that a bar? Filled with ghost whiskey. You can't even drink, you can't even hold things. Now that's neither here nor there. Now drink up, Charlie. Yeah! (coughs) It tastes like souls. And sweet, smoky inspiration. Now take these five bottles and come back to me after you've drunk at least half of them for more great advice. (sighs) I already feel five times more creative. Well, it looks like I'm looking after you until this is over. I don't even know how I'm going to prepare for my poem. Well, you're from London, Zoe, so why don't you go listen to some Chaz and Dave or something? (laughs) Don't you mock Chaz and Dave, they are saints, you ectoplasmic burk! Saints! Stupid bloody ghost. Why does everyone I casually insult leave me? Right, lads. I'm sure you're champing at the bit to thrust manfully into the world of danger. Ah, I'll be young forever. God, stop touching my arm. What is wrong with you? Get off. Why are we the only two here? The rest were not deemed... worthy. No one else wanted to join, did they? Shut up. Like I said, it's time for our first event. This will separate the men from the boys, the wheat from the chaff, the lollygaggers from the scally rabbits. Are you just making up words now? I've invented all words, Sterling. Language is very much my plaything. Anyway, I present to you our first dangerous dalliance. That is a laptop. We're going to watch a film. But not just any film. This film is still in the cinema. (laughs) Piracy, Sterling. Feel the danger. Feel it in those strapping thighs. (laughs) I've never had such extreme fun. If you do this well... I might even let you illegally download my album. Oh, I I don't know, sir. I don't think I could handle such danger. Wait, this is an extreme sport? Piracy? Yes, Sterling. Quite the black beard of cyberspace am I. Soon, someone will teach me how to open two tabs at a time, and I'll be nigh unstoppable. But but this isn't extreme at all. Everyone does this. Constantly. Calm down there, you wild man. We we can't all live on the edge like you. I thought this was an extreme sports club. It is. I mean, just look at this danger. Copyright law, Sterling. You wouldn't steal a handbag. Or a car. Or my beating heart. How is this a sport? Are you annoyed, Sterling? Inspiration not striking you, is it? Feeling down in the dumps. Well, I'd finally be rid of your blistering frame. Not have to see your face in my dreams. Heaven forfend, I wouldn't want that. Oh, oh, it's still in the cinema, but it's on the computer. Oh, 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 my mind is blown. This is ridiculous. Starling, wait. Look, 
Join us for the next event. There's far more sport there. And some danger. <laughs> Fine. You promise. Would I ever lie? You managed to convince the police I was the Yorkshire Ripper last week. They didn't let me go for hours. Well, in my defence, I was bored. Charlie? Charlie, I'm back from the shops. Are you okay? Hello! I've just organised the herbs in the spice rack in order of flavour from mild to zesty and cleaned all our rooms. You certainly have a lot of books about Charles Bronson. Oh, that's really helpful. Wait, you're never helpful unless you've been drinking. Are you still drinking the ghost whiskey? It's been four hours. And two delicious bottles, which I recycled thoroughly and responsibly. How can you drink two bottles? What does ghost whiskey even do to a person? Who knows? It's a mellow buzz and I occasionally remember parts of the Second Boer War. Why are you dressed in black? More importantly, why do you have sunglasses on? It's night time. I found my calling, Zoe. I'm a beat poet. The voice of my generation. Ready to click and clack until I ain't coming back. Jazz. Yeah, but Charlie, I swear you told me you can't click your fingers. Yeah, I know. That's why I've bought something to do it for me. Yeah? Look! Castanets! You know, for clicking! No, 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 put them away. Spoil spot. Wait, do you have more? What? No! Then what, pray tell, is that sound? Um, life's rich tapestry. Charlie! It's a mouse skeleton. I found it in Spooky Bill's room. No, I have a pet. Give that here. Oh my god, why would anyone have so many objects that make the exact same sound? Is that an oyster shell? Why do you even own one of those? The ocean blue holds many a secret. That can't be your answer to everything. Alright, minions. Ready for more jestery? You haven't even gotten out of your car. Well, I wouldn't want to get into trouble with the law now, boys. I'm on what's colloquially known as my last chance. But I can still lead you, can't I, Steve? Oh, I'll hear no words against you, almighty Dean. Mighty? Steve, the last two extreme sports he made us do were loitering and leaving less than a 10% tip at a restaurant for a meal he made us pay for. Oh, and you think that's acceptable, do you, Liam? The service industry depends on those tips. Heartless, Sterling. Absolutely heartless. If you're quite done besmirching our brave waiters and waitresses. That was your idea. Shut up, Mr. Pink. What? Now, our greatest challenge yet. You see that house, nary but 20 metres away. Uh, Aye, Dean. Uh, What do you want us to do? Oh, I know. Throw rocks at it. Oh, no. Burn it to the ground. Oh, what about shooting it with an harpoon? Certainly not, Steve. I want you to go up to the front door. Okay. Give it a big old knock. Then, then run away, never to be found again. That, that that is not an extreme sport. That's knock down ginger. That is a child's game. I played that as a child. I can't imagine the sordidity of your past, Sterling. And I've done drawings. Your scientists sound like quite the violent thug. This is banality. Hello? Oh, uh, sorry. Could you shut your door, please? I, I need to run away laughing now. Oh. We're all right, then. Bye. Oh, my God, she opened the door! <laughs> that was too extreme. Oh, we're flying too close to the sun, Dean. Our waxen wings are melting anew. Stay frosty, Steve. If you succeed, I'll give you this delicious boiled sweet I've just found in a glove compartment. Mmm, just eleven. God, Sterling, I... Are you still here? I would have thought you'd have run home crying right now like like the quivering Christmas goose that you are. Hmm? Oh, God, Dean, I need a lift to the lake. Ah, going to the old fishing hole, are we? Bet you're going to do something really crazy, like, like go for a swim less than half an hour before eating. Well, might as well. Maybe on the drive over, we'll wrap ourselves around a tree and die in each other's arms. I mean, Steve isn't going anywhere. I've never lived life so hard so quickly. Dad? Oh, you told me that you'd moved. 
harmless larks. I'm not going to stick around, Sterling. The only thing I hate more than you is water-based frolicking. If you fall afoul of the lake, Make sure someone takes a picture of your misfortune so I can laugh at it and put it on my fridge. I'll be sure to do that, Dean. You better! All I know at the moment is heartfelt crayon drawings by my loving children. They're bloody awful. Anyway, farewell, Sterling, and see you at the poetry reading tomorrow. Zoe! Zoe! Oh, there you are. You're gonna want to see this. Oh, God, God, where's Charlie? She's not... What? No, what? why is Charlie wearing a heavy coat and scuba gear at the same time? To be honest, it's better if Whiskey Breath herself explains it. Loving the nickname, Zoe. Remember when you were telling me about that virgin wolf woman, Liam? I looked her up at the library and I'm pretty sure this is what she got up to. I feel like you misunderstood a lot of this story. It's probably because she hasn't stopped drinking ghost whiskey the entire time. I've got a tolerance now! You can't judge me! We both can and are, constantly. Anyway, since I heard about her, the river lady sounded like a hoot and a half. So I got down here. Do you even know what happened to the woman who went in the river? Well, I assume she sank to the bottom of the river, found Atlantis, and the beauty of that lost kingdom inspired her for the rest of what I assume was a long and happy undersea life. Unbelievable. So I got down here, I put on my coat, my rocks and my scuba gear, I waded into the water, was just about to dive in when Zoe starts coming up and crying. It's been a crazy night. So you were wearing scuba gear the entire time? What? Uh, yeah, Liam. Otherwise I wouldn't breathe. Do you even know what water is? Hey, Zoe, let us know what water is. What an idiot. Charlie... Why do you think we rushed here? Moral support? We thought you might have drowned! Why would I drown? I was wearing my scuba gear! You don't own any scuba gear! You, I have no idea how you could possibly have done this! Got it off of eyebrows. You know eyebrows. They can get you anything. Can't you? Yeah. Well, oh, God, have you been here the entire time? <laughs> oh, behind a tree. And you did nothing to help? That's not my area. Yeah, come on, Liam. I filled in all the necessary risk assessment forms as well. I am a fan of my safety. Well, at least that was covered. Did you even write anything, Charlie? I dropped my notes in the lake. Of course you did. Let's just all go home. Eyebrows, can you get us a lift? Aye. Charlie, you're soaking. Oh, I am as well. And the mysteries of this murky brine have ruined my last good pair of socks. I won't have any now unless our poem's the best. This has certainly raised the stakes. It certainly has. Let's go, eyebrows. Tomorrow can only go brilliantly. Charlie, Charlie, wake up. We're at the stage. We have to do our poems. Get up. Was that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm completely awake, ready to poem it up. See? Where did you even get an antique grandfather clock? My connections. In antiques? Where is the dean, anyway? Take that, window! This is an open-air stage. Are you ready, students? Are you ready to taste the blood of your enemies in your supple mouths? Are you ready for... THE TERROR DROME?! Um, what's that? Oh, bloody hell. The terror drone has been postponed due to lack of interest. Oh, fine. Let's just go and do our bloody poetry readings, then. Let's start on a high with Martha Loveless. Get on stage, you're everybody's pal. God, Martha's going first. Her poem's going to be hilarious. How are we even going to compete? Um, this poem's called To Dad. Yeah, you go, Martha. We love you. 
Uh, okay. <clears throat> Why did you leave me all alone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. All I've wanted is your love. Yeah! Oh, yes. Oh. yes. Without it, I feel empty. <laughs> wow, that's some killer material. I'll say. Don't want to be alone again. Hey! Why are you laughing? Martha, that poem is hilarious! You're amazing! If anything, Martha's the daddy. The daddy of being cool! Bray! No! You don't get it! Why won't anybody listen to me? My life is nothing but torment! I'll admit, that's even bought a, a chuckle to my impressive mouth. Why will none of you listen to me? Oh, just sit down, Martha. No one likes a show-off. So it done, you're next. Oh, dear. Um, okay. This is a haiku. If you don't like this, I'll take it as an insult and kick your neck in. Oh my! I'm scared. When's Martha going to come back on and do another hilarious joke? I'm sure that meant something to somebody. Anyway, Charlie Best, your time to shine. Will you be bringing that coffee cup full of whiskey on stage with you? You appear to be splashing it all over yourself. Yeah? I was totally doing that on purpose. It's a statement. On the war. Ha! Huh, I can only assume you mean the Second Boer War. Ah, oh, a woman after my own heart. Charlie, have you actually written anything down? Because since this assignment started, you've either been drunk, clicking, or splashing in a lake. I don't need to write stuff down, Zoe. The poetic magic is all here. In my mind dungeon. From there, the genius will spring free. Now, time for me to create history. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Now, let me begin. This cannot end well. What do I think of when I see snow? Winter's blanket? Nature's balm? The ice may heed the river's flow, but no more frost can heed my harm. I walk upon a freezing path, and no more choices will I make, for the snow has covered the aftermath and concealed the dream from which I wake. You... you liked it! That was really, really nice. It's inspired me. I'm finally going to pursue my dream of starting a snow appreciation society. Yeah, I'm going to appreciate the beauty of nature. I'm going to call my dad and tell him I love him. Oh, come on! Best. I loathe to say anything resembling praise to your pathetic chops, but, but well done. You've warmed this miser's heart. Yesterday, I saw your follies in the lake, and well, I thought you were almost certainly heading towards a humorous death. A proverbial bloodbath. But what we got best was a blood sink. Have at thee. Charlie, well done. That was really good. I'm so proud of you, and... Are you still drinking the ghost whiskey? It hurts when I stop! Where the hell's Liam? Steve, why are we on the library roof? My poetry reading has already started and it's freezing up here. They haven't even taken down the Christmas decorations. Look, there's that statue of the little baby Jesus the Dean painted his own face on. Oh, Liam! I think you're right. That crusty old Dean wasn't letting us reach our extreme potential. Now, this. Oh, this is an extreme sport. Hang gliding, or doing tricks, getting mad air, proving we're better than those arrogant birds and their sky monopoly. Wait, since when did you guys have hang gliders? Your budget's barely big enough to afford advertising. You know that your posters are just other people's posters with also there's an extreme sports club meeting written at the bottom in pencil, right? I've made this one by myself. Yeah, like a scientist. Or Fred Dibner. Oh. So what's this made out of? Um, paper clips, cling film, and bits of tin from my room. Oh, <laughs> I had to get rid of it somehow. Anyway, since you helped me see the true extreme way of doing things, oh, hey, you can go first. Oh, Oh, God, no. 
Look, I've got to go. I'm late for my poetry reading. Oh, come on, you must go first. You're the visionary here. Anyway, you can fly down to your poetry thing. They're doing it on that stage, look. Yeah, but... Fine, fine, fine. But don't I need a helmet or something? Helmets are just hats for the week. Now grab the hand glider. Go on. Is that pot made from sticky tape? Oh, it's an adhesive marvel, Liam. Now three, two, one, fly! Oh, God. Oh, no. Why? Ah! Ah! There goes the most extreme man I'll ever know. I can do it, Zoe. I can do something. I can go on a poetry tour, inspire the world, have all my food dipped in the finest crystals and... What is that? Is that Liam on a hang glider? That is pretty extreme. Ah, it's that horrible flying boy that's fallen to my slumber. God, let something soft break my foot! Oh, God, help! A piece of scaffolding fell on me. <laughs> Just like Martha, always getting into scrapes. I, I can't feel my legs. She's so cool. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, my God. Why does Liam look all wrong? Charlie, he just hit a poorly constructed metal stage with his face. Do you think he'll be okay? With his face? Meh. Seen worse. Starling, you horrific cretin! Nice to see you've taken time out of your busy schedule to come here and injure yourself all over my lovely stage floor. Your poem, if you please. Uh, uh... Dean! Dean, you can't do this! He's clearly been rearranged! So... Also that! Ah! I've seen worse. Anyway, he's already in front of the microphone. Sterling, if you please. F- falafel building. S- Steve, Steve be evil. Big pain. Do you an apple? Because I'm an ostrich. What have Keith? Mr. Mime. He knows. Put. <laughs> It's a surrealist masterpiece. I've never felt so many emotions. Five, maybe six at a push. What have Keith? 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 That was certainly better than anything Charlie could have done. No. What? Absolute genius. Oh, come on. Mine actually made sense. Silence, you tuppany scribbler. Sterling, I hate you with every fibre of my Herculean bodice. In fact, I'd organise this to, to whiz on your hopes. But no, it's you who've whizzed. Whizzed on my heart. That was, objectively, the best thing I've ever heard in the two days I've known what poetry is. Such wordplay. Such vibrancy. It would be remiss of me not to award this opus with the highest accolade. Sterling, the £15 voucher is yours. I'm sure you have a speech prepared. Uh, um... Liam! He's collapsed! And now he's taking a poetry nap. What a committed writer. Truly a master of the craft. Is he okay? He looks a bit bloody. I thought that, but then the Dean explained it was a poetry nap. Come on, I know we're a nameless part of the crowd, but listening costs nothing. Yeah! Long live Liam! <laughs> Zoe? Charlie? Where, where am I? The hospital, Liam. Remember, you hit the stage. With your face. What? Yeah, but you're fine now. And you won the poetry competition. Look, Charlie's got new socks. They have horses on them. And I'm on Eyebrow's 12-step programme to combat my addiction to ghost whiskey. I'm learning to love myself again. Also, the Dean's here. Yes, Sterling. We thought you might not make it. I'd even bought a cake celebrating the occasion. Look at the icing I've added. 
It just says ha ha. <laughs> you may have won this round, Sterling, but we both know who'll win the war. Dean, you're standing on my oxygen tube. I know full well what I'm doing. <coughs> Why are you even here? Many reasons, Sterling. Gloating at your disgusting frame, my hideous wife's plastic surgery on her feet. Uh, oh, and identifying Extreme Steve's body. Extreme Steve's dead? Who? What did he die of? He tried to ride his motorcycle over the artificial ravine I had wisely installed in the library. He failed the jump. Wow, how extreme. Hang on, wait. Isn't that ravine only four feet deep? Who dies from that kind of height? What am I, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman? I bid you all adieu. I shall be taking the vengeance cake with me. Aww, I wanted cake. Um, I, I don't know if this is usual for my condition, but I'm pretty sure I haven't been able to see the colour blue since I woke up and- Hey, I wonder what happened to Martha. I haven't seen her in a while. I've been here the entire time. I'm literally in the next bed over. The Dean was sitting on me. Martha's here! Why are you in a full plaster cast? Is it another one of your classic jokes? No, you idiots. I was crushed under a piece of metal. It's a wonder I'm alive. What's wrong with you people? Why did nobody come and help me for a week? All people did when they came up to me was give me high fives. I had to crawl here by myself and even then, I had to convince him it wasn't a joke. Hey, look, I got the squirrel to chase its tail. Oh, oh, wow, oh look at the squirrel. Oh, little guy. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, wow, that's so cool. Oh, yeah, I'm really impressed, Charlie. Guys, my injuries. Well, that's what a month of training does. And it's certainly paid off. Wait, a month? How long have I been here? Let's not talk about that now. He's doing another flip. I hate this university. Off Course was created by Jack Nichols, Michael Dodds and Edmund Colley. It starred David Duncan, Alexander Reindorp, Elizabeth Swinburne, Tom Clements, Elizabeth Duggan, Sam Valentine, Henry Banks, Libby Wharton, Andrew Eck, Daryl Griffin, Tom Hollister, James Nolan, Rihanna Tomlinson and James Varney. Tonight's episode, Poetry Emotions, was written by David Duncan, with Henry Banks, Tom Clements, Edmund Colley, Michael Dodds and Jack Nichols. This episode was edited by David Duncan and James Duncan. The Off Chords theme was written by Michael Dodds and Edmund Colley, with vocals from the Lancaster University Theatre Group. The sound effects in this episode were downloaded from freesfx.com. Off Course was made in association with the Lancaster University Comedy Institute. Visit our Facebook page for more details. Lucy presents Off Course. And be sure to listen in next Saturday at 2pm for another episode of Off Course. <laughs>